Alec was just talking about his Tune 2 controller that's standalone, so I've got a Tune 2 sign which uses the same controller and it's battery powered. So there's no wires that I need to plug in anywhere. Yep, so that was new last year. I'd only actually got it finished on the 23rd of December. <laughs> but so it was ready for the two busiest nights of the month. So this is my inspiration. It's uh, the US Christmas Expo last year. Someone had a 2x2 P10 battery powered matrix with an Octo Scroller. And of course, Daryl demonstrated the Octo Scroller a few years ago without the battery. At my uh, place, it's on a corner, and I've actually got yellow lines outside the house, so people can't really stop right in front of the house. Um, so having a tune to sign in the display, probably people are not going to be able to see it very well. And so where I actually wanted to put it, it's got across the driveway, or you've got overhead power lines, so it's just easy not to have any cables running from the house. But also the trouble with a portable sign is it's someone could just like nick it. Like you could walk out of the room now if you wanted to and <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've actually got a security feature on one of the legs that I've chained that around a, a light post so it's a little bit harder to pinch, still not impossible. This is basically rehashing what Alec was saying with the, the panel controller. It has, it supports multiple kinds of panels, whereas, whereas in the size or the scan rates, um, it has up to four rows of panels you can control. It's obviously standalone, so there's, it's running by itself. And it's programmed with a thumb drive, like Alec was saying. And obviously, you can buy it from Alec. So how you configure the panels, and to start off with, you actually have to press the modify button and put in a password 168. I have no idea why that's the password, but that's what it is. That's so um, normal uh, office staff can't actually change the panel configuration. Yeah, okay. But I'm not sure why it's 168, but... Oh, I'm going to work with that. Yep, so once you've done that, you set up the, your, uh, your panels on the A side. Sorry, that's the, that's the entire sign on the A side and then on the B side is an individual panel. And then obviously once you've done that, you want to save it, and then you need to export it, or run to Alec. <laughs> <laughs> now this is something I found with a battery, depending on the size of the physical size of the panel, you may need to lower the brightness to otherwise the battery is going to run flat pretty quickly, especially with the ones I've got, which are quarter scan. They're bit more of a power guzzler than 8 scan and 16 scan. Um, but the beauty is in the software, you can go in the settings screen, you can go to the advanced option and lower the brightness down to 40%. Sign now is running at 40% and it's daytime and it's fine. So you can just imagine at night time on the curb, it's fine. So in order to get anything on the, the matrix at all, you need to create an animation. You can have text, which Alec was showing, yeah, picture. What I'm running now is actually a picture in Photoshop. Um, the text had too, many, too much white space, and I wanted to get the biggest text I can on that matrix. So it's just easy to do it as an image. Um, you can also have video. That was actually my original plan. I set this up in X-Lights and wanted to export it as a video file with, a, obviously, a rainbow effect. <laughs> Um, but I couldn't get it working. You can have transitions, so you can have different frames with the delays how long each frame uh, stays on there. So I've actually got three frames. I've got one which is the tune to frequency, then the time, and then the date. And then once you've set all that up, you need to record that to the flash drive, and then save it so when you come back next time, you've still got something to edit. <laughs> When you record to the thumb drive, there should actually be two files on the thumb drive. If you see more than two, like, like more than one LOU file or a PRG file, delete the old ones, because otherwise it seems to load the old file and you wonder why nothing's working. 
because you can you can see by the the second file is actually dated. So if you do it on the same day, it's fine. But if you do it the next day, tomorrow, or whatever, the old file is still there. So this is the basic steps for downloading to the controller. You connect the thumb drive into the controller, then you turn on the power. You wait for the panel to say OK, like it says there. Then I don't know if you have to, but I'm just being safe. I turn the power off and remove it. No. <laughs> no. You do it while it's still on. If it breaks, I'll come to you. <laughs> and then you turn the power on again, and then number six, you hope it actually worked. And if it doesn't, you go back to square one. <laughs> and I find if it doesn't work, I actually get like a single red pixel on the right hand side about halfway down, which means it didn't work and start again. So now onto the battery. The panels are five volts, so a USB power bank's good because that's also five volt. You can get power banks that have quick charge, which they put out higher voltage, so I don't know if if they would still do 5 volt or they would kill your panels. I didn't want to try. <laughs> and when you get a battery, you need to consider the rating of the battery. The one I've got uh, is on the next slide. So the, obviously the higher the capacity, the longer it's going to run. Um, but you also need to consider how many amps you can put out of the battery. So the battery I've got puts out 4.8 amps out of two ports, so it's 2.4 each. And what I was finding, and probably Daryl's got the advantage coming out from America, um, when you buy a battery, you need, probably need to buy it in Australia because it's really difficult to get them sent overseas. They, unless you're traveling with them, the airline just won't take them because they're lithium. And obviously, being a 5-volt battery, you don't need any DC to DC converters, so they're not going to do anything funny and blow anything up. So this is the battery I use. It's the Anker PowerCore 2100. So it's got 20,100 milliamp battery capacity. It has two USB outputs at 2.4 amps. And in this case, the total is 4.8 amps. Some of the batteries you can get, the total is actually less than if you multiplied what you can put out by each uh, USB port. So you've got to be careful of that. So in my case, the, with the battery I've got, it runs that matrix for three to four nights at 40% brightness, uh, possibly more. It's usually got uh, 25 to 50% battery life left on it. So we're talking about eight, eight to 10 hours? Yeah, two hours a night. Wow. That's pretty impressive. So this is a quick and dirty slide on scan rates. Obviously, you can get 16 scan, 8 scan, and, four sc and quarter scan. The panels I've got are actually quarter scan, so they're actually brighter because there's more lines of the panel on it at any one time. So that, I mean, you've got to consider that when you're choosing your battery because if you have a 16 scan panel, it's going to run longer than a quarter scan panel because the quarter scan panel has more lights on at the same time. But having said that, if you, the, if you choose a quarter scan panel, it's going to be brighter and depending on your eyes, it will be less flickery. I don't know about you, but with 16 scan panels, they tend to look a bit flickery when I look at them. What does that actually mean? So it actually means that 16 scan, the, each um, panel have, in this case has 16 lines. So a 16 scan panel actually has one line lit up at a time, but it cycles through it really, really fast. So this is my Tune 2 matrix. It uses nine quarter scan P8 outdoor panels in a 3x3 three three configuration. The frame is just timber with an M MDF on the back. And then I place it uh, curbside around a street light so no one can nick it. Is it waterproof or do you just not put it out when it rains? Uh, I'm usually outside every night. So I, I wouldn't, s the panels themselves are outdoor waterproof from the front. But the construction, because I need to actually switch it off from the back, it's not waterproof at the back. So it's probably splash proof. This is just a checklist if you want to do a sign like this. You're going to need the panel controller. You're going to need the software to control it, which you should get with the usually supplied as a download link when you buy the controller. You're going to need a, the thumb drive. It's formatted as FAT32. 
And obviously you're going to need panels. <laughs> but then you're going to need your 16 pin um, ribbon cable. You, obviously you get them to connect each, each panel, but you're going to need the longer ones to go from the panel to your controller. And then if you want to run it on battery, you're going to need your, your power bank and a US, uh, cable with USB type A on the one end and whatever you're going to plug it on the other end. And this is an optional suggestion. Um, this is how I've connected the power together. So these are just eBay specials. <laughs> Doesn't involve any soldering. And that is it.